So Robosis other API came out of beta and it has a bunch of new features, including an audio interface editor, different filter types, as well as improvements to the overall system that also make it easier to use. But as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel and let's get into the video. So here is the forum post saying that Robosis audio API exits beta and it also says that enhanced sound controls are now available, where the first paragraphs are saying that this is no longer going to be in the beta features window. And the improvements of the audio API focus on improving natural audio simulation in your experience, including an audio occlusion and diffraction, environment-based reverb, directional attenuation for emitter and listener, and an intuitive visual audio compressor editing. And here they are noting the concerns of usability, because it was kind of hard to use and basically set up, and I previously announced the role of curve editor for normal audio emitters and now they have stuff like a volume property for the audio player and the audio device input. So you won't need to use the extra audio fader anymore to change the volume of audio. And there is now a new spectrum enabled property for the audio analyzer allowing you to disable frequency analysis to improve performance if you only need a volume metering. And then there is a new audio filter instance which is a lightweight frequency adjustment effect with one customizable band with multiple filter shapes. So what you are seeing right here on the screen, this is the properties of the audio filter and the new audio filter editor. And if you don't know what this graph is, this is basically the volume level on the left in decibels. And this right here on the bottom is the frequency of the audio. And there is a low pass set to 24 decibels set on the frequency of 400. So on this line right here, with the Q property value set to 1.5. And I'm not exactly familiar with what the Q means in this case, so I'm just going to explain the rest. And what this filter does is that any part of an audio that's running on more than 400 frequency is basically just going to decrease in volume and sounds above 1000 frequency are going to be just fully muted. But continuing, you might notice that combining multiple audio filters can achieve similar effects to the existing audio equalizer, where the audio equalizer provides three filter bands of a preset shape. An audio filter provides just one band with a customizable filter type. And if I just go to the filter types, Right here, these are all of the filter types that you can set to the audio filter instance. You have all these stuff like the peak, low shelf, high shelf, then different passes, then band pass, and a notch. And everything is basically just explained right here, so you can pause the video if you want. And then the Q, this is actually the quality value used to determine the slope of resonance of the curve represented by the filter. So for the filter type, the values of low pass 12 decibels and a high pass 12 decibels, a Q value of a square root of 2 divided by 2 or basically just 0 0.707 correspond to a flat filter at 12 decibels octave slope. And don't worry, if you don't understand anything from this, me neither. And all of that basically just covers several common filter shapes by combining audio filters in a various ways where you can shape your audio exactly how you want. And this just talks a bit more about the interface and how you can basically just drag and move a band around which also allows for a different manipulation of frequency gain and resonance which is the Q. And I actually need to refresh my page for these videos to load. And never mind, I actually have to use a different browser. But anyways, these videos are basically just going to present how easy it is to use the audio filter editor. So that was the video number one, but they have also added this editor to the audio equalizer. And lastly, they re-enabled the audio analyzer get spectrum method for all of the audio sources except the audio device input. And they are also exploring related features or functionalities rather, including performance and secure voice commands and also special text system that will unlock new possibilities for voice-enabled experiences. And in my opinion, this is going to be really nice, and it will allow developers to make really interesting systems and games that are going to use voice chat. And here are some special things. So that's it the forum post, and let me just go into Roblox Studio right now. But before I do that, I just need to advertise my Patreon, where for just $5, you are going to be able to get access to exclusive content, including places from my videos. And there is also going to be different stuff that I share with my free members too. But anyways, 
Right now I just need to wait for Roblox Studio to update. And I am in my voice API test place, which I use in a few of my videos, where this place is also available on my Patreon too. But basically there is the audio API setup, these different walkie talkies and an intercom system. So let's actually see how we can use the audio API with a basic setup. And this setup just consists of the audio player, then a script that just plays the audio, as well as the audio emitter with a connected wire. So if I do a playtest, you can see that this is just going to play this sound. So I can for example just add one of the instances, which is going to be the audio equalizer and then just connect it with a different wire. So this is just going to be the equalizer to emitter, and this is just going to be the player to equalizer. So I just need to connect these wires properly. So the player to equalizer has the audio player as the source instance, and the target instance is going to be the audio equalizer. And then the equalizer to emitter is going to go from the audio equalizer to the audio emitter. So if I do a playtest, everything should be working fine. And well, it is. So let's see the different properties of the audio equalizer. So normally we just have the bypass, the high gain, low gain, mid gain and the mid range. But now there is a state editing tab with the editor property that if we press, it's just going to open this window right here. And how we can edit it is simply by just dragging these passes around. So I'm just going to leave it as this and then just do a playtest. And now this audio is going to sound a little bit weird, so I just need to change the editor manually. And I'm just going to move these around. So that's for the new audio equalizer changes and how to basically use it and let's just add the audio filter instance as well. And I'm very quickly just going to reset everything from the audio equalizer back to the original position. And then just add another wire, change the equalizer to emitter to equalizer then filter and then this wire is going to be the filter to emitter. And again, just change the target instance and set everything for the filter to emitter as well. And let's see the properties of the audio filter. So this is the default menu after we open it. We have all of the previously mentioned filters from the filter type as well as the release value. So if I just move the peak, it's going to add a simple pass right here that we can simply edit. So let's just actually see this in action. And that might be a little bit too loud, because I can't even hear myself. Okay, that's a little bit better. But you can see what's going to happen if I basically just drag this notch right up here. So I hope that there is going to be a way to actually prevent this. Whoa, what the hell is this? <laughs> I can basically just make a lot of different sounds with this. But anyways, let's see the low shell. So the low shell is basically just going to increase the audio the further it is on the frequency scale, or we can even increase it. And then the high shelf is basically just going to be the reverse. And there is also these different passes. So that was the 12 decibels, this is the 24 as well as the 48. And there is also the band pass and the notch right here on the end. But I guess the peak is just going to be the most universal one. And I am already making like the audio distortion effects. But yeah, that's basically going to be everything for today. Sorry if I didn't overview everything from the update, but I don't really have the time and I am already recording this late at night. But anyways, again, go check out my Patreon page, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel, but that's going to be everything for today. So thank you for watching and see ya.